You are now listening to the NYYST podcast. Welcome back. This is episode 223 of the NYYST podcast. I am your host, Christian. As always, joined by my co-host, Chris. Yo! And go Yank. When we said we were going to give 120% this season, Ryan thought we meant what he had planned. So he's going, yep. he's going all at it today. Yeah, you know, normally, like, you would think that like on Easter Sunday, you might want to not do that like all day. <laughs> That's it. See, we grew up like in a not too religious. We went to CCD, but we didn't really pay attention. So I see where he might have gotten confused on what you're supposed to do to celebrate Easter. Okay. And that's really what it comes down to. How was your Easter? Uh, I don't know. Your daughter's first Easter. Yeah, it was. Uh, according she was ac- much- according uh, to my mom, it was... Um, my daughter's first Easter also. Uh, she got her an Easter basket that said uh, Callie's first Easter, and uh, it's not. So that was cool. Sorry to cut you off. At least your mom remembered. Oh, tell me that the t- you you have a mom story. You have a mom story you needed to bring up. Tell me that was your mom no, forgot was, Easter. No, absolutely not. No, I'm uh-huh. saying at least your mom remembered. Your mom. Mm. She sent Not it. Ryan's. She sent it early in the mail, so it's like Not, maybe she didn't remember. Not not Ryan's mom, just your mom. Right, right. So many people are probably confused by the whole thing, but it's the it's the hypothetical mom. Hmm. So how was how was your daughter's first Easter? <clears throat> she was actually much more receptive to the easter basket and she was the christmas tree which was nice because i was kind of disappointed on christmas when she was just like Meh. yeah but she was but she was what she yeah but what? kids are just like that when they're seven months at christmas and until they 11. hit two years until they hit two years christmas it's just like what the fuck is this let me rip the wrapping paper off the gift and now get the fuck away i need to take a yeah. shit and eat she was very excited by a few of the things that she got and then she broke two of them and then she fell and she busted her face so that was good mm. i hate easter i gotta be honest i'm not talking about like the religious celebration i'm not you know if you're religious you obviously celebrate but like i get i get christmas i get where we get to the point of like gifts it's jesus's birthday right i get all that i don't understand where how the fuck we got to a humanized Easter bunny breaking into your fucking house and planting eggs filled with candy and whatever else for kids to find. Where the fuck do we get this stuff from? Where did that come from? Uh, I don't know. There are religion. No, no, no. I don't, I don't need to get into it if you don't know it, but that's my problem with Easter. That's my biggest problem with Easter, and and I fucking hate it. I hate carrots. I hate rabbits, um, and I hate I hate everything about it. Really, I hate that it's on a Sunday. We don't even get a day off. We get a day off from work. Hmm. Interesting that we said that Jacoby Ellsbury put a curse on this team a couple episodes ago. Mm-hmm. People tweeting about Jacoby Ellsbury putting a curse we have even if it's just Mm. one prominent person in the media even if it's just one prominent person in the media we have one person that take that listens to this show and drives the narrative home mainstream because it's too coincidental it's too coincidental and and i fully believe that from the episode when you talked about this is what got me to it went from like a stupid conspiracy theory to I actually might believe it a little was the episode you compared uh who'd you compare you compared a Yankee player to someone and I just 
thought it was out of fucking nowhere. I, I don't even like, remember. I don't even remember what it is now at this like, point. Like, to me, I was like, what is he on fucking drugs tonight? And then all of a sudden, the next day, everyone's talking about it. It was, it was crazy. I know what you're talking about. I just don't remember what. Unless exactly you're stealing narratives from places and yeah, not being honest. I don't, have to, I don't have time for that. Mm. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, let's, uh, it's going to be funny. You know, if we do decide at the end of this, that this is it, you know, where's everybody going to get their material from? That's what I want to know. Yeah, we'll see the narrative. The narrative uh, around Yankee Twitter is going to be pretty bland, I'd say. It's like it's like we do a whole episode on Aaron Judge's legacy, and then all of a sudden you hear that like, oh, oops, it's on uh, every show. It's, every, everything. it's everywhere now. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, we're just saying. Uh, anyway, so yeah, Easter. Uh, I actually went by my <clears throat> my mom's today and she's sitting down eating, and she's like, "Yeah, Vajita, you keep doing that." <clears throat> Because you're gonna quit your podcast, and I'm like, "Yep." She's like, "Why were you gonna do that?" I said, "Cause I think it's time after five years uh, that the show is not making the money that it should, and uh, that we should walk away." And she's like, "No, I don't think you should do that." Mm. I said, "Why not?" She goes, "Well, do you like doing it?" And I said, "Yeah, I wouldn't have wasted five years on it if I didn't like doing it." And she's like, "Well, then don't quit then." I was like, "How much money you got?" She goes, <laughs> "She goes, maybe you should." She goes, "Maybe you should quit your show then." How did she know? How did she hear? Does she listen? Is she no, a she, closet listener? Uh, I seriously doubt it. I probably would have gotten yelled at us for some of the things that I've said on here. Yeah, she definitely. sees it on she, she sees it on Facebook. She'll share if we post something. She'll share it. Mm. Gotcha. You know, so please, you know, don't disappoint my mother. Please, you know, please leave us a five star rating review. I've done enough disappointment for that woman to handle over the last 37 years. Don't add another one to it. We will say five star rating and review. Go to go to um YouTube and fucking subscribe to the show there. And again, like we always say, word of mouth is the greatest form of advertising there is. You know, if you think there's a Yankee fan out there that hasn't heard of us, just say, "Hey, you know what? Check out the NYYST podcast." Hey, when we post a link on Monday morning, hit retweet. These are all the simplest and easiest ways to continue to support the show. And you know what? We definitely appreciate it. So we made a boo-boo, by the way, and, and we noticed it. We noticed it mid-show that we what announced that? we announced the serious news of that on April Fool's Day. And people are still tweeting us a week later saying they're waiting for us to well, not a week, I guess that was a midweek pod, but that they're waiting us for for us to say that it was an April Fool's joke. It is not. Yeah, but I said that at the end of the show. Yeah, but they're still waiting because they know how fucked up we are. That's what I said back to someone. People know how fucked up we are, that we would drag this out until November. Well, it's if we do decide to continue the show, it wouldn't have been a long April Fool's joke. It was just that what we were looking to have happen. We hit goals. We hit goals. Boom. Done. So there, we we're going to continue to work at this and uh, see where we're at come November and uh, away we go. So we'll just say that there are going to be two shows going forward on the, on the, you know, on the main feed. Um, we're going to record Thursday night for Friday morning. I have something in the works is hopefully I'll have a nice guest lined up. I don't want to say who or what yet in case it falls through. Cause then I, I hate not coming through on something, but mm. Uh, I do have something in the works, hopefully, that uh, he'll stick to his word and, and hop on. And if not, then we'll still be back here because we'll have another series to talk about. Um, it, the opening series did not go well for the Yankees. They lost today. They lost 3-1 to one after winning 5-3 to three on Saturday. So they dropped 2-3 to three to the Blue Jays. Uh, I don't know where you want to get started on this. It hasn't been pretty. The offense has looked anemic. Uh but I'm not surprised. Like, I think we, I think if you're a rational Yankee fan, and again, we spent so much time in last episode tearing down the fans, and, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. There are things that are going to come up, and we're going to, you know, you know, if you get offended by it, then stop doing it. That's all I can really say. But if you are a rational fan, I don't think that you're really that surprised that they didn't hit. 
this series. I don't care. Ryu, we talked about it. We don't see Ryu as an ace, but he's a really good pitcher. Yes. He's a he's legit, solid, top of the rotation type of guy. You know, the Yankees scored, what did they score? Two runs that game. They had way more opportunities than only, you know, they scored five runs on Saturday. They had way more opportunities than that. I didn't, I wasn't fully invested into the game today because we're recording Sunday night. It's yeah, it was tough to get into it. You know, it's Easter. You're with family. I had the game on. They had opportunities to score. They scored one run. I, honestly, I didn't, Gardy. I don't even know how they scored. Guardy had a runner run. on third uh, and he, he, uh, Turned the ball over to second base, got the runner in. Oh, so that's called situational hitting. Something it, that it's was called the it's called why Guardy's on this team. Really, is what it's called. Um, Frazier had a really good game. Uh, well, at least in that in that at bat, he stretched a single into a double. Uh, got over to third, and he really, I mean, he manufactured that run. And uh, Guardy, you know, put the bow on it by pulling the ball and doing what he had to do. Uh, the the Jays pitcher today, TJ Zoik, I think is how you say his name. Uh, he sounds like a effect from the 1966 Batman series. Zoik. Uh, he's somebody that the the Jays think highly of. It looked like his stuff was pretty good. So I mean, you know, uh, and their bullpen man right now, it seems like they got a couple of guys in there that are throwing gas. The guy to close the game today, he's hitting spots at 99 he's going to be you know he's going to be tough i can't remember what his name is um but yeah so the offense really outside of what do you want to say gary sanchez he didn't do anything today but he had a couple you know he's got two home runs already uh dj had uh a two hit game on on saturday judge had a two hit game saturday nobody's really doing anything so I mean, are we are we here going to overreact now and say that the the offense is just going to be flat all year? No, I mean, the Yankees are notoriously slow starters offensively. I actually don't think they were a couple of years ago, um, but the year before that, cert- they certainly were. Um, we can just refer back to how slow they were when it was, I believe it was like mid April, maybe or end of April, that Marlins series when it was just like, Jesus Christ, when are they going to start winning? And a lot of it has to do with going from the Florida weather back up here. That's not an excuse. I think what I've seen more than anything else was, uh, and we talked about this. It's, I mean, these guys are going from, spring training where we talked about this pitchers aren't f- fully amped up they're not giving you everything it's b- it's been an adjusted uh spring training where you know innings don't have to last full innings or guys are being pulled out um the yankees players were certainly not in every single game getting seeing live hit, uh pitching and you saw a lot of guys that their approach was kind of backwards. And one of the guys that stood out to me was Stanton. Um, it almost was like he was in a hitter's count where he should be looking fastball. And he, and, he, and in his head, in that moment, you don't think as a hitter, you don't say to yourself, the pitcher is going to get cute here and throw me an off speed pitch. That's called a, that's the opposite of what your approach should be. When you're in a hitter's count, you're thinking fastball wherever you want to put it on the plate wherever your sweet spot is, if it's a three, one count, you're saying to yourself, okay, I'm going to get a fastball here and I want it on the middle in part of the plate and I'm going to turn on it. And if you're, and if the pitcher gets to the point where you're seeing the, the laces come and it's a curveball, I don't care where it is. You're not swinging because that's not your approach. Your approach was I'm going into this looking for a fastball. And instead, Stanton was opposite. It was like he was looking for the pitcher, like I said, to get cute, throw him the curveball, and he was coming in with the fastball and swinging at it after it was in the catcher's mitt. And that's kind of that was kind of where the Yankees just kind of looked lost to me. But, I mean, we can sit here and talk about these games and how they lost two out of three. Man, I could pull – I'd rather focus on the positive shit, to be honest, because there's a lot, to, a lot of positive to take out of this series too. Uh, just looking at some averages real quick. Uh, Frazier's hitting 444 through the first three games of the year. 
uh dj and sanchez are hitting 273 and everybody else is kind of like down down the list a little bit the one guy that really sticks out to me here is um hicks is batting 083 uh and something that Aaron Boone said in the post game was very interesting. And as my, and look, I say it all the time. You guys know, you loyal listeners to the show know that I don't like Aaron Hicks. I, it's not that I think he's a bad guy. Like I, you know, people think, oh, you know, like he doesn't like Hicks. What is, Hicks didn't do anything to me. He just sucks at baseball. Oh, you guys aren't you guys weren't pals, and uh, he stabbed no, you in the back when or I, something. Remember when I taunted him at in Scranton? Did you? Whatever, whatever year that was. He was in Scranton. Um, yeah, when we went to that game, he was rehabbing. Oh yeah, yeah. And we remember yeah. we met Nick Rumbelow's stalker. Oh my god! Hey, buddy. Yeah, you see that guy down there? We're like brothers. Oh yeah, you guys grew up together. No, he signed an autograph for me once. No okay. man, I work at the Burger King. Okay, uh, security. <laughs> The guy was literally like, no, I work at the Burger King. And he came in there once and said, hello. And I was like, okay. Uh, all right. Next. Can I have some of the drugs? He's like, I love you, Nick. And we're like, Dude. Uh, okay. Rumble, bro. It's like of all the baseball players you're going to fall for, it's Nick Rumble. <laughs> the best. Oh, rum- we oh, t- Rumble, bro. We were Rumble, telling, bro. We were telling uh, Ben Heller to go fuck himself pretty much. And then uh, six weeks later, he was doing our show. And we were like, this guy has no idea it was us. Well, we have a we have a history of that. You started shit with Lance McCullers Jr. And then he came on the show. That's and true. Then, uh, I always forget he was on the show. And then if uh, we get this guest on uh, on Thursday, if he holds his word, it's it will all we'll come back because I fucking was talking shit to him on twitter yeah so maybe we should just stop being nice to everybody we want people on the show we just fucking start cursing them out on social media i agree but uh oh yeah back to hicks here look i'm i've been an advocate of hicks hitting nine so if you hear this is going to be a narrative now going around uh twitter and uh maybe some some beat writers because hicks is hitting 083 and he's looked really lost at the plate Mm. Uh, that he should be dropped in a lineup. I've been saying that since February, by the way. Thank yeah, you. I'm going to have uh, for it too. I love what Aaron Boone said today because somebody asked him, he was like, are you thinking about dropping Hicks out of the third spot? And he says, not after three games. I think Aaron Hicks will be fine. It's only been three games. I forget the exact quote. That was the – the pretty much the crux of what he had he said he basically said it's three games like i'm not going to overreact to three games which yeah look as much as i don't want hicks hitting third i also don't want my manager making overreactions to the lineup after three games yeah i mean i respect that answer i think i think it that shows how level-headed boone is and uh you can't overreact if you're gonna over if you're gonna do that especially in baseball you're you're not gonna last long man you're gonna be switching this lineup up every five five days you know how streaky baseball is right and hicks is hicks as much as i don't really care for him he is a kind of a streaky guy where if he gets that left-handed stroke down man he can you know he can hit a few home runs in a week yeah he, problem it just i just i don't know what it is about him it's just you know what it is i think frustrates me about i was him talking so much i was talking to a couple other uh friends about this because they didn't they actually don't care for uh hicks either and I think I hit it hit, hit it on the head with this. I feel like Hicks just isn't there, if that makes sense. Like, he's had some big moments, yes. More defensively, really, than offensively in recent years. Like, that play he made in the outfield a couple seasons ago. In Minnesota, yeah. It was fucking, that sticks out in my head, but. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure he also had a couple big, at least a one big home run. In the no, game. I'm not. He tied or, yeah, and I'm not saying. Same game. And I'm not saying that he hasn't had big moments offensively, but it's like I see a guy in Hicks who I'm never going to complain that the Yankees signed him to a long deal again because I think it was a steal. I think just defensively alone he's worth that contract. Yeah. But for me, I feel like we're looking at a guy who has more in the tank that he doesn't give to us. I feel like there's more potential there, and it's like he's plateaued. And he's just going to – he's a guy that – 
he could be with this team for 10 years and 10 years later we could be like oh yeah hicks played for the yankees right and it's like i don't want a guy that's going to be here that long who's going to be hitting third by the way being a guy that's just forgettable he's a forgettable player and i think that's why i just can't take to the guy he's got to he's got to make his mark let me ask you this outside of maybe one or two times can you even think of like a a strong hitting like a when he got really hot i mean for more than just a few games has there ever been a time where like he's been even close to being like player of the month for them you know what everybody on this team now you look at this lineup you can say at some point since they've all been here they've carried the team offensively i just never feel like hicks has ever done that that's maybe what it that's maybe what it is in my head that i'm getting at here it's just like he's never been the guy everyone has their moment of being the guy for a, a certain amount of time and he's just has he been the guy in certain moments sure every player is gonna have that but he's just never been that fucking guy it's almost like and i guess it's worse because he hits third because we're looking at a guy who's supposed to be a, a much better player offensively than than he is given where they're putting him in this in this lineup right so bat him ninth that's the spot for aaron hicks. if hicks was a nine hitter i wouldn't even i wouldn't even be discussing this i wouldn't so uh so I did. I really liked Boone's answer there, uh, right? Because I, you know what, I just, uh, you know what, I always say this. It's like in the in the dark night, the Joker said, "This city needs a better class of criminal." And even though it might not be a full representation of the fan base, the fan base that is on social media, I need a better class of fan. Like you guys are telling me, oh, I'm a diehard Yankee fan. I've got Don Mattingly's fucking batting glove from when I was a kid. My dad used to go to dinner with Elston Howard, uh, you know, fucking whatever. Like I, my grandpa used to fucking uh, be Babe Ruth's hot dog runner. Cool. But like, if you are telling me all this stuff, then it's like, you have to know that after three games, you can't make any grand proclamations about this team because Look, the Orioles demolished the Red Sox this weekend. The, they kicked their ass. They swept them, and Baltimore's coming into the stadium starting on Monday. We'll get into that a little bit later on in the show. But, you know, we know how the Yankees treat the Orioles historically. Like the Yankees, are, you know, let's say the Yankees come, you know, Baltimore comes in, the Yankees do what they do to the Orioles. What are you now? You're going to say that the World Series is back on right. after seven games? This is baseball. This is 162 games. Like, this is what I was saying about the people taking spring training so seriously. You're, there's going to be peaks and valleys in the season. And, like, yeah, we're the ones saying all rise all the time. We wanted a 1998-type season. Well, guess what? That team started the year 2-4 and four, or 1-4. and four, I forget. They started the year not playing very well through their first six games. And then they just hit a fucking streak and ran away with the damn thing. So, you know, we could still be at that point. So until, and even, you know, you really don't even start really worrying about your team until Memorial Day. Like you to take it by the summer holidays. Here's Memorial when you Memorial Day, 4th of July. Then you look at where you are around Labor Day and then you see where you're, you know, I just, I just can't get that worked up no matter how anemic the offense looked through the first three games. I just can't get that worked up over it. Here's, here's when you worry. I think Memorial Day is just a perfect marker of evaluating the identity of this team, right? When you sit at Memorial Day, we're not saying if they're under 500 that they're not going to make the postseason. It's, I mean, it's not a good place to be, but you got to look at the identity of the team at that point. That's when you can start picking, picking out certain things and who are the New York Yankees. And from there... If it's something good, if they're showing a dom dominance throughout the league, they're a dominant power powerhouse. They're they're favored to win the World Series. This is who we are this year. It's Memorial Day. They're fucking showing up, and then they lose that identity from there on out. That's a problem. 
But right now, we can't do that. It's only been three games. I feel like last year, and I guess it was a shortened season, but the team never had that identity. They never knew who they were. They were they would go on hot streaks, and then they would friggin' lose eight games. And that's the kind of shit that you don't want. You can't do that over such a small sample size. So the 1998 Yankees started the year one and four, and then they went 14 and one in their next 15 games. Yeah, so like, that's why you just can't. I'm not saying, you, and I'm not sitting here saying you can't be annoyed with the series. It was frustrating. It fucking, you know, yeah. After, of course, opening day is opening day. You're waiting for baseball for so long. You got Garrett Cole on the mound, and you're excited no matter what. But, like, I'm not sitting here and saying after this series you should be uh, happy with what you saw. But, like I said before, there's a lot of positives to take out of this out of this series as well. I think I think a lot of the, the uh, areas of this team that we had question marks on uh, really made you feel a lot better. Again, you can't sit here and say those question marks are answered. It's too early for that. But you like the direction in which – the answers going in a lot of these places. All I'm just going to say is that you waited all this while for baseball. You waited all this while for it. And after three games, like you just want to, I just don't get that mentality. I, I just yeah, don't. And like, you know what? People are going to have it. I, and you, that is, it is what it is. We're not sitting here fucking, I'm not necessarily ripping you. I'm just saying, I'm trying to help you not be fucking like throwing the season away. That's all. It's three games. Yeah. Did you want to fucking win all three? Of course. Two out of three. And nobody, Fuck yeah. no, nobody wanted to start the season one and two. Like, no, but this is also not some patty cake team that they're playing. We all know that the, that the Blue Jays are on the up. You know, they're on the, the come up here. They're a good team, even without maybe they might be missing their closer and they might be down a couple starters. Springer was on the IL, but still look at this lineup. And the, obviously they got some hidden gems in that bullpen because I didn't think that they had the, yeah. the type of arms out there that they did. So you got to tip your cap to the team you're playing too. But again, like we could be sitting here in, in a month and the Yankees rip off one of these fucking ridiculous 15 and two runs. You're not even thinking about this opening series. And, and again, and I saw somebody tweet this the other day. Stop saying that this doesn't matter. All the games in April count as much as the games in September. And theoretically, yes, you're right. Every game has the same amount of weight throughout the 162 game schedule. Games in September aren't weighted more than they are in April. But when you have 159 more games to play versus when you might have 13 more games to play, the reaction of the fan base should be way different. If the Yankees are struggling in September and don't have a postseason spot locked up, then yeah, I can understand getting frustrated and angry because of what's ahead. If you have, if you, okay, let me think of a good analogy. If you were going through, uh, a hundred a stack of a hundred scratch offs that you spent a shit ton of money on and you got through three of them and you didn't win any money are you throwing away the fucking 97 that you have left no because, because the i'm first really optimistic i'm optimistic i'm going to hit something right. in the and next then when 97. you get to the when you get to the 97th and you haven't won anything now i'm pissed now you're fucking t now because you're fucking all giving the other ones away and you t and you fucking flip out right Right, because you're like, I just wasted all my time on this shit. It's that was a pretty games. good like, analogy, I, I think. I give you a B plus for that one. Seven out of ten. Uh, seven and a half. Mm, that's your good one. Uh, good yeah. Idea. So, like, I get it. Like, I have people that want to make the point that the season, every game counts the same. Correct. You're absolutely right. But when you have 159 more games to play. Versus when you might have 20 more games to play, your reaction to the loss should be a lot different, in my opinion. I'm not sitting here saying, oh, I'm really happy the Yankees lost today because they have 159 more games to play. But it's also not going to ruin my fucking day. I'm not going to sit here and be depressed about a loss in game three. If, they, if we're sitting here April... Uh, September 4th and the Yankees are fighting to get into the postseason and they and they just drop two out of three then I'm going to be pissed about it because now we're winding down because now there's no time to maybe make up some of their losses if you don't think this team has time to make up for one bad, bad series in on April 4th I don't know what to tell you then yeah 
Yeah. Let's get into. And you know what? Uh, you sorry. know what? And uh, uh, sorry. And a lot of it is, I think, a lot of people have this NFL mentality, where yeah, if your team mm, starts one and two, you, you're probably in a lot. You might be in trouble. That's if a good your point. team starts one and two in baseball, I mean, Jesus, how many? I mean, how many series does a good team lose throughout the course of the year? Okay, that's a good point because I mean, I think a lot of these fans that are the most irrational are are football fans. Uh, in a sense of they don't watch every game. They're not here for the whole thing. They're they're here for, you know, certain games that they want to watch, and that's it. And maybe it does feel like a football season to them at that point. I think you're frozen. Uh, now you're good. You freeze too much. We need to get you better Wi-Fi. Hmm. Hmm. So, I mean, I yeah, don't know. So that, I, don't know I guess what, that's all we... I don't know what you want to break down about the actual series. I mean, I have a lot of po- I, we're talking about all rise all the time. I have a lot of positives to take out of this fucking series, man. I do. I was actually came out of the series. I, I'm not even upset one bit. I'm actually I'm actually excited. Well, no, dude, there is there is there is something I do want to talk about. Somebody that wasn't in the lineup today, uh, John Carl Stanton. Uh, you know, every any time that you see the lineup posted, and either him or it, Judge is not in the lineup, uh, automatically uh, your mind goes to the worst possible scenario. Mm-hmm. Are, are you alive? Yeah. Okay, I'm just checking in. Your computer is very delayed, and now you're freezing. All right, I think we got our technical difficulties figured out. Talking about so, Stanton being out of the lineup. Right. So anytime that you see John Carl Stanton or Aaron Judge's name not in the lineup, your name uh your name, your mind automatically goes to the worst possible scenario. What's wrong with these guys? And hey, you know what? It's warranted after the uh the way that these guys have not been on the field the last couple of seasons. And I think it was Jack Curry on the post on the pregame today said out of a possible a hundred no, it's 222 games, right? 162 and 60 is 222. Out of 222 possible games in 2019 and 2020, you want to guess how many stands played in? Not in counting the postseason. Thirty-six. That's the uh, that's that's the under. He played in. He's played in 41. I was close. Of, yeah, you weren't far off. Yeah, he's played in 41 of 222 games. So if you do the math on that, he's played in – we'll round up. We'll give him the benefit of the roundup here. 19% of the Yankees' regular season games in the last two years. That's crazy. That's 19%. Crazy. And I'm rounding up because it was, it was .1846. So it's a very weak roundup because you round up to five to round up to nine. Yeah, that's not even fair. It's that, really 18. All right, so fuck you, 18%. Wow. Yeah, because so I, calls- knew, I knew two years ago he played in, what, 18 games? And that was in the longer season. Yeah. So, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's not good. So, again, anytime that you see his name not in the lineup, you're automatically saying to yourself, hmm. What's so going then on? It come it. It comes out today that Boone said that it's just a day off. Uh, you know, we were talking about the stand. You said this earlier. It's just something's not right with him right now. And then we had – remember we had talked about this, that Stanton didn't start the first couple games of the spring mm-hmm. of the spring training schedule. He was, For whatever reason, he was behind everybody else. So I don't know if that's kind of ca- carried over in any way where maybe he's lagging a little bit. But – you know, a combination of him just not being right right now and uh, they wanted to get Gardner in the lineup. He didn't play today. And then Boone comes out and says that he's not going to play Stanton five days in a row, which was just like, what? Yeah. I, uh, but uh, I'm not even going to complain because we said this before the season started. These guys were going to be babied even more so than normal. But it, again, then it kind of seemed like... And he's a then DH. Was- he's a DH, Christian. He's not even uh, playing I mean, the field. So then I guess what Boone meant to clarify is that he doesn't want to play in five games in a row this early in the season. And then if 
you know, he's rolling down and, you know, into the real swing of things, then he'll play as many games as, but I, come on, like, really, we really think John Carl Stan even 10 games in a row, 15 games in a row. No, no, I, I, I don't get the mentality of this early in the season. To me, this early in the season, you should be playing five games in a row. You should. And I get it. I understand that your body's not there yet. I understand that. But you're a DH. This should be when his body is getting more used to playing those games in a row. He's not. He, first of all, he hasn't got even gotten on base. So it's not like his legs are worn. Right? It's not like he... We're talking about a guy who went up and swang a bat. Swung a bat. Swang. swang, swang. He swang. swang. He swung a bat. How many did... What? 20 times? And now he needs a day off? I just... Look, I'm not going to sit here and harp on it. Because I'll, I'll never get it. I'll, I know and I'll never get my answer. I just don't understand the rationale behind it. I, I just don't. I don't think it makes sense to me. I, it would make more sense if something's going on, if something underlying, uh, some underlying thing is going on here. He's been on base once. Oh, I, I apologize. So he did, he did move the legs a little. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. It's just, it's just frustrating. But then I, you know, I, the Yankees are going to go out of their way to keep Judge and Stan healthy. So it worked twofold. You didn't play Stan today. You gave Judge half a day off, and then, you know, he said they want to get Gar – you know, we talked about this. Gardner's going to play a lot this year. He is. Yeah, of course. Of course so he they is. got him in the lineup. You know, just – you, know, you know, I thought we were all rise all the time. It's like you're just – I see your eyes going down, and, like, you keep talking about all this stuff, and it's like you're getting upset. I don't want to see you get upset. I need you, I need you to keep the energy. Or else I'm gonna go. I'm gonna spiral out of control. <laughs> Look, man. Right now, you know, I, it's it's a season long thing. So right now we're we're in a little we're in a little dip right now. The Yankees need to come out and they need to do what they do to the Orioles. So you know that's that's gonna that's gonna cure a lot of the ails right now. It is. They just need to get going, man. And uh montgomery you know we'll talk let's let's worry about the orioles towards the end of the show here uh we do have a couple other things that we should get to here um the fuck is this yeah so you know we'll move on here kluber started uh saturday's game Corey kluber who i mean that guy must be real fun at parties why Look, referring to his interviews he's the most stoic person i've ever seen in my entire life like i literally seen stone statues emit more emotion than Corey kluber has yeah there's a few yankees that i can uh i can say that about so kluber's uh line from saturday he pitched four innings two runs one earned uh, three walks and five strikeouts uh you know the things that people were saying about him throughout the preseason kind of held his control wasn't all the way there but some of his stuff is just it's so good for me if i'm going to evaluate Corey kluber after his first start as a yankee i'm not looking at how long he's gonna go i'm not looking at stamina you know he's working himself back up you know the yankees are gonna have a short leash on him in that in that regard um Control, sure. I mean, he does need to work on, on the control, but that will come in time um, as he builds that stamina, I think. Um, my biggest things were you're looking at a guy who didn't have defense behind him to start the game. He he threw, I didn't go back and actually count, but a lot of extra pitches that he didn't have to. He still got out of those jams. He still picked up his teammates. And a guy who, when he did have control, which was majority of the time, let's not, let's not sit here and act like he was all over the place. He certainly was not. But when his shit is on, man, he is in his top form. That fucking, his off-speed pitches are unhittable. 
he is fucking filthy, filthy. And I loved everything I saw out of him from what I expected out of his first start and really not being at that 100% level ready to go, uh, you know, still working back into the swing of things. He fucking exceeded my expectations when it came to how nasty his stuff was and how he was able to get out of jams the way he did. Look, I thought he was pretty good. Uh, obviously, you want him to go deeper into the game, but for his first real start in, what, two years, I think he did a pretty solid job. You know, it's just you're going to have to continue to build off of that. He threw, if I can find it real fast. Um... Why do I have the, I have the Yankees lineup, but it's telling me Toronto's uh... – I'll just say this while you're finding that when you're looking 74, at, he threw 74 pitches. So, yeah. so, uh, you know, you're looking to, to, for him to get around 90 in his next start and uh, take it from there. We, you know, it's going to take him probably two or three starts before he's a real, you know, like a six inning guy, I guess at this point, here's what you're looking at with, with a guy like Kluber, who, who was an elite pitcher when he was healthy and, and, you know, a couple of years ago. When he comes back, you have question marks as to a how healthy is he, and I and I think you can throw that out out the door right now. If this guy Knockwood gets injured this season, I don't think it, I think he's one hundred percent healthy at this point. I don't think he's bullshitting about that one bit. But you have to look at what kind of stuff he has, what kind of bite he has, because that was that's what he lives off of. And if he had anything flat, you could maybe be concerned. But if his, if my only thing I'm concerned with is his control, that shit's gonna come. It's the it's the stuff that you need to look at. And his stuff was where it's always been. Right. I didn't watch that game yesterday saying, wow, his stuff is terrible. I came away saying just the opposite, that that his stuff is really good. And the control is something that will come with when he knocks the rust off. You gotta remember this guy hasn't pitched in two years. You know, that's why a lot, you know, and Jamison Tyone's going to be making his debut in a couple of days here. It's the same thing with him. He hasn't pitched in two years. So, you know, you, these guys are not, this is, we stress this all the time. This is not a video game. Like you can't just say you're on the mound. Everything's okay. These guys are still working back from stuff, you know, and there's different ways to work through things in spring training versus how when you're actually in, in competitive games and the Yankees sure. are going to, and the Yankees are going to take the, the time right now, especially early in the season to let Kluber and let Tyone get their legs under them, you know? Yeah, sure. Because you, you know, with Kluber, he's not a power pitcher. Yeah. He's got that hard fastball, but it only, it's only coming in at 91, 92, 90. And so he's not going to get, He's not going to get that by guys unless his unless his junk is there, unless his off speed pitches are there. So that's where you're seeing the the issue with control. Sometimes he knows he can't he can't just groove one down the plate. He's got to he's got to for him to be effective, he has to start that off speed pitch at a certain spot and let it drop off. He knows he can't put it. He knows his mistakes have to be out of the zone. That's where he's such a smart pitcher. And that's where to us, to the, to the fan who's watching is saying he has control issues. When in reality, it's, this is a smart pitcher who's in a competitive game now and knows he can't just, he can't make a mistake over the plate. So if he's going to make a mistake, it's going to be something that's low outside off the plate that can't be touched. And that's why he didn't get beat. That's why he did not get beat, even though right. he, if you're, he didn't if you have can, the zone if, as much as he wanted to. The, if you're us and you can remember back to the, the dynasty years, El Duque would pick nine or ten times in a game where he didn't want to fucking pitch to somebody. Yeah, because, you know, there's two ways to look at the guy doesn't have control. We always think of it as he's wild and all over the plate. But guess what? You know who else didn't have control? Domingo Herman. But it was a little different. It was he didn't have control – of where he wanted to spot the ball. So instead of missing and walking guys, he grooved them down the plate all day for his three innings. So would you rather Kluber right now be uh, lacking control, but missing where he can't get beat and then, sh and then prove he's still fucking effective enough to get out of the inning. Or would you have him rather just groove that change up or whatever the fuck that nasty pitch is? I think they call a slider just right over the plate. Uh, you choose.
No, I think you, if anything, I think you should be really encouraged by Kluber's first start this year. I, 100%. I think, you, I think if you have any other feeling towards him, then you just weren't watching the same game the rest of us were watching. I think he, sure. it's a really encouraging first start from him. Uh, and then really, uh, dude, I got to give the guy his fucking credit. Uh, Jonathan Weizak was outstanding Saturday. Outstanding. Outstanding. Two, uh what are you two scoreless innings? He struck out three guys. And it's not that I don't like Jonathan Wise because I tweeted this yesterday. I, I think he's got some of the best pure stuff on the mm -hmm. team. He does. I just don't trust him in big spots. Yeah, but you know what? The Yankees didn't trust him for a while and they told us that. And he was kind of forced into this thing. And he and he took the ball in some big spots that he really shouldn't have been. But maybe all of that, you know, he got, he, we forget what, didn't he have Tommy John? Yes. Did he have two Tommy John surgeries? He might have. I don't, for some reason, that sounds really familiar to me. Yeah. So we got to remember, this is a kid who got thrown into the swing of things when he really wasn't, probably wasn't ready and admittedly so from the Yankees, then gets hurt again, gets thrown back into some big spots and Obviously, he wasn't all there. Maybe this is the year he puts it all together. We talk about that with guys like Glaber Torres on the other side of the ball, where he needs to show us now that he's a superstar this year. Well, maybe this is Jonathan Lewizek, Jonathan Lewizek's time too. We're not talking about some scrub the Yankees uh, got in free agency that's just here to eat up innings. We're talking about a guy the Yankees had were highly touted that he was highly touted in this organization. So all I'm saying is that he had Tommy John in 2016. So, but he was hurt again after that. Yeah, he did have a significant injury where he, maybe something with the shoulder. I want to say he had something yeah, with yeah. the shoulder. Yep. So, you know, I think maybe what we're what we could see again. I'm if I'm I got to be consistent. If I'm going to tell people not to get crazy over, you know, two out of three losses. Not going to go crazy over Jonathan Lewizica and say he's going to be some fucking stud out of the bullpen just yet. But you like what you see. And the reason why you can be optimistic is because you know his stuff is there. And maybe this is what Jonathan Lewizica looks like when he puts it all together. And if that's the case, this dude looked fucking dominant. Look, the Yankees, we've said this, the Yankees need... They would be great if two did, if they both did, but the Yankees really need and are looking for one of Nick Nelson and Jonathan Lewisica to really step up and be a key contributor to the bullpen this year. Yeah, and I really, I mean, that was one of my positives I took out of the series. You didn't want it, the offense wasn't there, obviously, but if you're gonna walk away from this series and say I want to stay positive. Look at the pitching outside of Domingo Herman, which, you know, he had a short leash today. But look at what fucking King did. I mean, look at all the guys that came into these games. We're talking about an offense. You just said it before that that's this is their strength and they have a really good lineup, even without Springer in it. They have a really good lineup and the Yankee pitching did not let anything bleed. Nothing bled out. When they got into jams, yeah, maybe they gave up a run or two, but they never let the game get out of control. I think they let up nine. I think they only allowed nine runs in the series. I yeah, mean, so three all average, three every game. You're going to average allowing three runs a game. I'm going to like the Yankees' chances to win most of those games. Absolutely, because you know the offense is going to click eventually. So today, Domingo Herman pitched, and uh, he had a really rough second inning. Uh, it kind of got away from him there for a minute. And, uh, you know, he didn't have a, like you said, he had a short leash today. He only pitched three innings. I want to see how many pitches he actually threw. Uh, it would help if we had like a stack guy, you know. Yeah, that would be nice. He threw 68 pitches. So he threw a lot of pitches in three innings. Yeah, that's a lot. So, uh, and then Michael King comes in, dude throws six scoreless innings. I think he allowed two base runners, uh, gave up a hit and a walk. He retired 16 straight at one point. I mean, Michael King was like, oh, you don't want your job? No problem. Give me the here's ball. The, here's the thing with Michael King, and I tweeted this too. I said, because somebody uh, said this to us, he said, uh, 
something about you know king and i said well that's michael king i go when he's on he's he's disgusting but when he's not it's just disgusting like yes. there's no real middle ground with michael king either he comes in here and he does what he did or he's a guy that can't get anybody out it's also not established yet right so i think the call so we is, could say the same thing about jonathan Luizaga, right Right. I'm not ready to make him be I'm not ready to, to proclaim him as a top setup guy right now. But right. I think for what he did on Saturday, I think it was very impressive. And it's a good step in the right direction for what the Yankees are hoping from him. Uh, but and again, you know, we'll talk about overreactions. And then the fans today are like, well, king to the starting rotation. <laughs> right, right. All right, let's relax because, again, like, do you guys not watch the games? This is just what I don't understand. Like, do you not watch the games? Is every day that you – do you have, like – what's the thing? What's the guy from uh, 50 First Dates, 10 Seconds? Hi, Tom? I'm Tom. Do you have that problem? Or do Hi, you go to bed – I'm Tom. Or do, you, or do you go to bed at night and flash the thingy from Men in Black and then, like – it's just like a new day. Like you don't remember anything. Like do you, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, Michael King was really impressive today. And, and, and on a day where like, I was really worried about burning out the bullpen that he saved the bullpen, you know, because coming, you know, and they were talking about this on the game today, a little bit that I actually was really paying attention to that the Yankees bullpen coming into the game today, you know, what did they, I don't think they, they allowed one run in like nine and third innings. And I'm saying to myself, well, that's not good. I mean, yeah, it's good that you allowed one run, but you've had more innings pitched out of your bullpen than you did out of your starters yeah. through the first two games. That's not good. Yeah. So well, it, it goes back to like the shit I say about our society of like why we can't just fucking agree on things. Same thing happens within the Yankee community. You, we got to get back to like basic points of agreement here. And it can never just be like Michael. The statement can never just be Michael King was fucking dominant. Great job. He had a great day. Great outing. Good for him. Couldn't we all agree on that? Couldn't we all say with our, we watch with our eyes and yes, we agree with that statement. But then it turns into, Nah, that's not controversial enough. Let me turn it into, he needs to be fucking starting in this rotation. Because then it, then you have the rational and irrational saying, okay, it's been one fucking game, so slow the fuck down. There's a reason why he's not in the starting rotation to start the season, and we need to trust that. And maybe, yes, he maybe he ends up there. Maybe he keeps the dominance. But that's where you get the split. And now we can't agree on Michael King anymore. Now I got to defend Domingo Herman, that jerk off staying in the rotation. Right. And, and I don't want to do that. I do not want to do that. He's the last person I want to defend. I don't Especially think after was, being a piece of shit on the mound today. I don't think his stuff was terrible in the first inning. I, no, I, it was good actually. Again. And I was really, I really did watch like the first inning, but then like I was pretty much busy throughout the rest of the game. Like, so I don't know, man. It's just like it's one star. It the, the game, the Yankees didn't lose because of Domingo Herman today. You know, mm. they, they just they didn't score runs, dude. It just no. If if Michael King didn't pick up Herman from what he did, then really all you could blame on Herman was that he wasted a bunch of arms in the bullpen and 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 really fucked us for the next couple of days. But because Michael King stepped up and picked up his teammate, Domingo Herman really, other than not having his good stuff, there's not much more you can really say about it. Because the reason the Yankees didn't win was not because of pitching. And the bullpen is not worn out because of Michael King. So the only negative thing you take out of this game is that the Yankees, once again, didn't score enough runs. Right. So the Yankees are just going to have to really tread water here with the pitching until their starters get a little bit more built up and then they get some reinforcements back in the way, like a, like a Justin Wilson. We know uh, Britain's going to be a little bit longer than that. Uh, it's probably going to be, you know, June ish for Britain, but you can't have, you know, you need performances like you're going to get out of Michael King. And, you know, I feel bad for the guy because I'm not going to be at all surprised 
when I, you know, before the game tomorrow, when the Yankees announced they had to send him to triple a. Yeah. Of he's going to be, he's going to be useless for them for the next five days. It's of just course. Dead, unless, yeah. 100%. It's going to be a dead spot in the roster. And Davey Garcia pitched today. The Yankees alternate. It's not even, it's so weird how they're doing it. It's not even like the triple a team. It's the Yankees alternate site team versus the Phillies alternate site team. I think they're playing each other like 18 times yeah. in, in the, in the next month. Mm-hmm. And I think they don't even have fucking umpires down there. The Yankees like, it's like the Sandlot. It's like the Yankees, like fourth string double A catcher is the fucking umpire for the game. So Gary Sanchez. Right. And I saw somebody, somebody tweet. It's just so ridiculous. Like the way people <laughs> act towards Gary Sanchez after the game yesterday on Saturday. Yeah, it's great. He hit, he had two home runs, but how many singles does he have? <laughs> <laughs> Gary's not here to hit singles, dude. It's crazy. Oh, well, I guess we can. Can we get to Gary now that I segued so beautifully into that? Uh, what do you want to talk about, Gary? Yeah, look, the two home runs are great. That's not even the surface of what I saw out of Gary Sanchez, of what I'm taking away from what I'm seeing out of Gary Sanchez. The first thing is just his overall confidence on the field. He looks like a completely different player. He looks like a leader as a catcher. He looked great. Just overall, mentally, he seemed to be a lot more in tune with the game. At the plate, yes, the home runs were fucking awesome. I went crazy. I screamed. I made my one-year-old daughter cry because I startled her. Um, but just his approach in general. We've seen Gary hit bombs with a terrible approach. He just has, even has a much better approach, but over everything else, I loved how Gary Sanchez looked behind the plate. I think right, so explain this. Explain this to the the, view, the listening audience here okay. because I I actually took my kid to the zoo on Saturday and I was going to come home. I DVR'd the game and then like a dumbass, I always do this. I went on, I opened up the MLB app thinking it was my calendar for whatever fucking reason because I was trying to figure something out ah, and I man. saw the score. So I ended up skipping ahead a few innings. I only missed like two innings, but in that time span is when the Blue Jays scored a run and I saw that. Is scored on an, on an E two. Now you're going to tell me that it had nothing to do with Gary Sanchez. Uh, yeah. Okay. So here's what I'll explain again. Take me for what whatever the fuck you want to take me as. I played baseball through college. I know a little bit about what I'm talking about with certain things. When a catcher that has the arm of Gary Sanchez is throwing that ball down to second with a runner on third, that's something that is pre planned. Okay, not every catcher is throwing that ball down to second base. There's certain signs that are being given to the fielders on if that runner takes off from first to go to second because they have to be prepared if he's either going to fake it down to second and maybe, you know, snap it down to third to try and get that runner at third, uh, you know, to, to make a move thinking he's throwing it down to second and then you get him at third. Or you're giving your fielders a sign that says, Glaber, you need to get over. I'm throwing this through and we're going to try and get him out when he tries to steal. So in that situation, when you're Gary Sanchez, most of the time you're throwing it through down to second base because your arm is so strong. If as long as Glaber keeps that ball in front of him, that runs not scoring. He's not even thinking about scoring. So, and, and the last point before I get to the finale of this is Gary's job at that point, because there's a runner on third is to not, fly the ball up over Glaber's head into the outfield. He needs to give him, even if it's a bad throw, it needs to be a throw that's low that Glaber has a chance to keep in, keep it in front of him. What Glaber did on that throw, it wasn't a good throw, but it was, it was enough. Gary did it perfectly where Glaber could have kept it in front of him and Glaber should have known in his head There's a runner on third. If this throw is anywhere off right from my glove, I need to make the priority of the ball. And he didn't. He made the priority of the runner going to second base, and the ball skipped through into the outfield, and and the runner scored. So, yes, it's an E2. But if Glaber was prepared for all that, which he should have been, that ball stays in the infield, the runner gets to second, and the other runner stays on third, and no run scores. Okay. Okay. 
What so else? I don't put any blame on, on Gary on that whatsoever. You, I thought you had, something, you had something else for Gary you were going to say? I was ju just overall behind the plate. I think he had much quicker pop behind the plate when he was throwing the ball down. And his framing was really, I mean, he stole a couple strikes that even fooled me at the time. And then I looked back and it, they were a few inches off the plate. And he did, he did such a good job framing. He used to over-exaggerate the frame when he didn't have to. Yeah. He didn't do that this series, and I hope he keeps that up because he looked much, much better behind the plate. So you brought up Glaver Torres. Are we done with him at shortstop? No. No, but, it, again, you feel optimistic about certain guys like Michael King because he's answering some questions, and they're, those answers are trending in the right direction. The answers for Glaber at shortstop, for me... He was, I mean, I held my breath. I said this to you. He's becoming my, my new Anduhar out there. Every time the ball was hit to him, I held my breath, and that's not a good sign. So do we find out if DJ Mayu can play shortstop? No, no. Okay, I'm just, wondering, I'm just checking. Because I think the one play today uh, that everybody was kind of upset with him over, the ball was hit in the hole, and he, you know, he was deep, and he backhanded it, and I don't think he, he didn't really look like he set himself, and it was a bad throw. It's not the easiest play in the world. A better shortstop makes the play. But, again, after three games, like, I'm not ready to try to reinvent the wheel here because Glaber, and say Glaber Torres can't play shortstop. So now we got to figure out what the hell we're going to do with him. No, look, Glaber is here as your superstar. He's your future superstar. And you don't – we said this. We baby him too much, man. This is it. You either, you either fucking prove that you're the, short, you're the superstar that, that everyone thinks you are or you don't. And for me, the, the plays in the hole and throwing, you know, throwing the ball in the dirt and letting it get away, that's one thing. Those things are going to – again, just like pitchers are knocking off some rust, so is he. he you know, these are live balls coming at him. It's going to take some time to get in his groove, and I, I think he can get there. Those don't bother me as much as the plays where Gary Sanchez threw it down and he didn't, he wasn't there mentally enough. They always say like before every pitch, you got to know what you're doing before every situation. You got to know what you're doing. When Gary gives you that sign that he's going to throw through, if that runner steals, you need to be saying to yourself the entire time, the ball's a priority. And, and for him, for him not to do that, that scares me more than, than him making a few errors and because mentally it just showed me he wasn't fully there and you got to hope it doesn't turn into a mental thing like it like with Andujar when it's just like at a certain point he bobbles a, a gimme because he was just that much in his own head well like we said well we'll have to see man it's three games and they're you know I just don't want to make any – and you know what? I don't have to worry about it because the Yankees aren't the fucking fans on Twitter. They're not going to do anything rash after three games, and they, nor should they. Everybody's just got to stay the course right now. You know, it's it's three games. Three games. Three. And you got to hope the next three are better. And then as those games as those games continue to pile up, if they're not getting better, then then we can sit down and say we have something to worry about. But that comes at thirty games, forty games. It doesn't come right. after three, right? Uh, okay. And our we're winding down the show here. There's no social media aspect today, although we do have one thing that we will get to. Because uh, I didn't know what to ask. What are we going to ask today? You know, nah, and people nah. like they suck. I hate this team. <laughs> they're not gonna. They'll win eighty games if they're lucky. Like yeah. I know what the responses are gonna be, and there's just it is what it is right it now. It is what it is. Um, our friend, uh, you know, Marley Rivera of ESPN asked uh, Clint Frazier today if he thinks he's a good left fielder, and Clint Frazier said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, three years." That mm. was his response. But uh, if you go to my uh, my Twitter, I tweeted uh, a little funny caption thing, but that was his reaction to the question. And then she doubled down and said that Clinton was OK with the question because it was based off of something they had talked about in the offseason and then went and talked a whole bunch of shit to fans about how their how their journalism career is going, which is 
always good when yes. you um, professional you don't know how to take criticism from people you ask them how their poor lives are going because you're fucking doing so much better than them mm. but here's what she might have missed if she wasn't watching because she was too busy mask shaming people at yankee stadium mm -hmm. uh his face said more than his words could ever say did he do the smirk like the side where he smiles got, from the watch side of his the, mouth watch the video it's out there enough and then you could you can even just kind of see the the still that i posted on my twitter wasn't it a seinfeld episode or like a curb episode where they talk about like if someone gives you too many yes it, they're they're lying i gotta i gotta find that somewhere like, right, I, I think gave I'm you not, three years. Mm, not but, good. But more along the lines of like he was just delaying before he, so he didn't say something that he might have regretted. Yeah. Like yeah, and the you know you know you know how it is when you're trying, especially when like you're arguing with your wife and you're just trying to buy time to get the answer yeah. that's going to get you in the least amount of trouble. And you pretend like you were distracted by something so that you have a second to fucking think about it. Right. But, uh, that's what he was. That was that's what he was doing because. I'm telling you, his his facial reaction will tell you more than anything that could have ever came out of his mouth. Well, I think it was just like it was just like, what the fuck are you asking me this for? Well, it's Clint Frazier's been the guy who he hasn't been that likable. And I think we gotta give him a little more time. Clearly, personality wise, he had to mature. And he really has come a long way. And I think and a little poo boo in Saturday's game. He yeah, did. but like for clint right to ask him that kind of question you almost know it's a fucking shitty question because this is a guy who has dealt with being overly cocky and it didn't have a good look on him so when you ask him that type of question it's like it's like he doesn't know how to answer because it's not that he's not necessarily that he's not confident he just doesn't want to come off to seem like he's still that douchebag that he used to be so i think it's a fucking stupid question first of all Second of all, I think Clint Frazier, now that he's shown us that he's really matured, he's got to be more confident in himself. Yeah, I think I'm a good left fielder. I'm, I'm a, I was a starting left fielder for the New York Yankees. That's my job right now until someone tells me otherwise. Yes, I think I'm a good left fielder. That's perfectly okay. You're not saying you're better than anyone else. You're not being cocky. You're being confident. What a fucking shitty, honestly, what a shitty question. Do you think, do you think that this team can win the World Series? Uh, yeah, that's why we're fucking here. Do you think you're good? Do you think you can hit the ball? Yes. What a fucking, like, hey, Marley, go home and fucking maybe think about better questions to ask. What a fucking dumb question, man. Wow. What a la you know, you know what dumb isn't the word? Lazy. What a lazy question to ask. Lazy. Right. And uh, for anybody that, well, obviously you won't be watching the game when uh, you listen to us because it's happening right now. Shohei Otani is pitching. Uh, he's already hit 100.6 miles an hour on the gun and hit a home run exit velo 115. Um, and I will tell you that I have absolutely zero respect for any of Shohei Otani's accomplishments. Zero. Agreed. Uh, and hey, you know what? More power to him. He can hit home runs. He can throw the ball really hard. But this is a guy who showed that he doesn't want to deal with the bright lights. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry. If the guy had any balls, any testicular fortitude, he would have signed with the Yankees. And this is not the this is not sour grapes saying, "Oh, I'm mad because he didn't choose the Yankees." I could care, I couldn't care less. Honestly. Well, didn't he bail on the game he was supposed to pitch against Tanaka too? Load management or some bullshit. I don't mm, know. Load the old load management. Right. So that so guy Ryan knows a little bit about that. Right. He did. He was supposed. It was. It was being hyped up. I think it was a Friday night. At the stadium and then uh mike i think mike social was still the manager at the time and they were just like oh yeah he's a uh, load management he's not gonna play I'm like come on bro Everybody yeah and, he, and look there let's be honest you might not think it there's a it's not even resentment towards him or bitterness it's just like we can see that people lifted him on a pedestal giving him 
uh, rookie of the year over Andujar. That like the pedestal, the pedestal wouldn't have been that high if he was if it wasn't for the gimmick he brought to the game, of being both a pitcher. He could have he could have batted three times that season. Just the fact that he's a competent hitter but also a pitcher was enough to give him the votes to put him over the top. And that's where it's just like fuck you. At that point, and I don't care, and I don't care that you. But it was just like the way that it went about it. It's just like you don't want to be in New York. You want to go hide in Anaheim, and yeah, it's hiding because Mike Trout is the greatest baseball player on the planet, and nobody knows who the fuck he is because he plays out there. Mike Trout's so good, we might not see another player like him at that caliber for another couple decades after he's gone. That's how good he is, and no one even. You don't even see any of his plays. You don't even see him hit. Guy's been in the playoffs once. Once. So, you know, Shohei Otani can do whatever he wants to do. I could, I'm, I don't care. I really don't. Once you show me that you are not, you don't want to handle the bright lights. You, you want to just do your thing in obscurity, obscurity, I should say. That's fine. That's you. But then I don't have to respect you for it. 100%. He made a choice. You make a choice. Right. And it's not sour grapes because honestly, I wouldn't, I don't like dealing with the fucking circus. I, I wouldn't want to deal with the circus if he was a Yankee. So yeah. it has nothing to do with that. I'm actually glad that he's not, but don't fucking hide from it. <laughs> yeah. If you, Hey, if you don't like the bright lights, if it's too much for you, we're not saying that, you know, just maybe don't be a baseball player. Maybe don't be in the major leagues. All right. So, Unfortunately, the Yankees dropped two out of three. Aaron Judge is a bust. Uh, we were we were definitely wrong in saying that he was going to win the MVP this year. Yeah, because after done. after after three games, he's we've just proven that he's just worthless. So the uh, Toronto, not the Toronto, they just played Toronto. The uh, Baltimore Baltimore Orioles come to the Bronx for three. All six thirty five starts. Chris is triggered by that, but I love it. I love six thirty five starts. Very triggered. Um, so Jordan Montgomery will uh, oppose, of course now, uh, will oppose Jorge Lopez uh, Monday night. Then Tuesday night, Garrett Cole's back on the bump against uh, Dean Kramer. And then it'll be the Yankee debut Wednesday in the finale uh, of Jamison Tyone against um, John Means, who fucking dominate it seven innings no runs against the uh against the red sox on opening day so uh means is a good young pitcher it'll be interesting to see how tyone does cole is starting uh the yankees can't start the season 0-2 and garrett cole starts they need to put that one in the bank and find a way to win a game to win another game and just win a series go on hit the road to uh hit the road three and three i don't think that's asking a lot really to be honest with you because then they go on a road trip, and you know we'll talk about this on when we record on Thursday. They'll hit a road trip for against the Rays and the and the uh, Blue Jays. So it's not it's not going to be an easy road here for the Yankees. But if they are what we think they are, and you know we're sticking with all rise all the time, it's a road that they'll be able to navigate easily. So, but you know you want to see them get their first series win under the belt, and you know maybe Baltimore exhausted themselves beating up on the Red Sox. So, mm -hmm. and Adam Adovino and his underbite did make his, their Red Sox debut today. So there's always that. So unless you got anything else to add, Oh, we do. Let's uh, you got triggered by, before we close out the show, you did get triggered by something last week and I really wasn't expecting you to, but you did get triggered by it in our last episode. Well, part of it was part of it was me being triggered for her attacking us. Part of it was just sticking up for my boy, Ryan. Um, but you know what? We got an answer. We got it. We got our answer. So if you're ready, I'll, I can play that answer. I got the audio sure. queued up for Go us. Go right ahead. Go on and I guess fix things, whatever. Whatever. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a Yankee hater. I just hate the way... This idiot acts when he's watching them, and this season I hate it. I just—that's all it is, guys. Don't take it personal. That's it. Either Gloria's a very good actress, 
or she, that was very genuine. Like she showed us her disgust for for Ryan. For her, yeah, she did. While <laughs> also genuinely apologizing to us. But my question to you guys is: Do you live in a fucking wind tunnel? What was going on in the background? They live in Florida, so you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was like when Fuck. Cashman did that interview, like right off the fucking airplane. She sounds like a concerned wife whose husband acts like an irrational idiot, in her words, during baseball season. Which, hey, we talk about irrational <laughs> when we when we say things or like make rash decisions on what the Yankees should do. We're all irrational when it comes to to how we are as fans watching the game. So that's just what, hey, 162 games. That's all you got to get through. And Ryan, I love you, bro. I really do. You know, you're a great supporter of the show. The fact that your wife goes, I'm not a Yankee hater, or, you know, you, you got to step up on that, bro. Yeah. You, you, your wife's got to be a fan, dude. At yeah. least be like, be like, well, I don't, at least to not say something like I'm not a Yankee hater, like, mm. dude, step it up, bro. Like get that woman, a Garrett Cole Jersey. You yeah. Know, yeah, man. You do something, man. Deck it out. You got to deck it out. You know what you got to do? You got to get her something she wants, right? Something she's wanted. Right. You hand her that first. And, and at the same, right after that, you hand her the Garrett Cole Jersey. Or like if she wants, she's been busting your balls about diamond earrings and then you just haven't gotten them. Well, you get the diamond earrings. Get those the fucking di- diamond earrings. But the diamond earrings and, you know, the diamonds are in the shape of the NY. You know, right. you got to, you know, work now it Now you're like getting that. fucking creative. Now you, you want to wear diamonds? Well, you're also going to support the Yankees while you do it. Right. I'll, I'll buy, I'll, I'll get the blood diamonds going here. Yeah. No, yeah. you can't now, do that. Now we're getting crazy. Now, now we're going to trigger people. Right. Uh, so we better wrap up before we get we get canceled. It doesn't. We're canceling ourselves. So <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true. I got to say one thing, man. Like, there's a lot of things that I would be able to put up with, and I have put up with in my marriage. Of, but like, my wife hated the Yankees, or even came out and told the world that she's not a Yankee hater. I, I couldn't live with that. I'm sorry. That's like where I draw the line. Yeah. I I think that Gloria has a lot of resentment she's holding on to um, with us. I think I think I don't think we're helping the situation you, at yeah, all. Yeah, no, I think that we're we take him I think his level of Yankee fandom was what she was okay with. And then we just brought it overboard. And I think that's where we are, and I think we need to make amends. I accept your apology um and and that's it that's it from there i think it was very genuine yeah and she sounds like a concerned wife whose husband is bipolar which we yes, all are which, yeah we all which are. we all are so so uh you know glory if we're causing trouble at home i can't say that i'm sorry but you know try to try to be a little bit more supportive of ryan and we'll talk him into being a little less bipolar during the baseball season yes agreed that's co- it's called compromise Right. There's a there's a way to meet in the middle there. All right. So uh, that that'll wrap up episode 223 of the NYYST podcast. Uh, please follow us on Twitter at NYY Sports Talk. Please go to the shop nyysportstalk.com slash shop. Fellas, 15 will save you 15 percent off and free shipping. Like we said, leave us a five star rating and review. Subscribe to the show on iTunes. Tell a friend. You know, reach when you see on Twitter, you see the, the show see being something, posted. Say something. You know, hit hit the retweet button. All great ways that you can uh, support the show. And uh, we'll keep churning out the content for you as the season moves along. We'll be back Friday morning. We're going to record Thursday night, whether it's just Chris and I, whether or not it's that guy rise empty the tank, whether or not we have a guest, all remains to be seen. But there will be a new episode of the podcast on Friday morning. So until then... Uh, go yank Chris say goodbye. Peace.